this is Philip Back and today I'm going to talk a bit about software architecture. Yes, software architecture. And especially how to document the software architecture, what are the key parts of it, how you can organize it and so on. So first, let's put some structure around that. So what is soft, uh, system software architecture? There is a lot of things around these two words, software architecture. What I am talking here is for a given system, what is the architecture of this particular system. So a given system is usually providing value to the user through a number of use cases, Let's say one, two, and these use cases are specified in a number of use case specifications which are additional well, documents or content anyway, depending if you store things in plain old documents or into a proper repository, which you should do by the way. So uh, these uh, use cases and these uh, use case specification are crossed with a number of items which are into a supplementary specification. Okay, what is uh, this uh, about? Because I was talking about software architecture. Well, this is one viewpoint on the system, and here this viewpoint is about what people call the use case view, right? A view centered around the needs of the users. Well, there is another view, which is the view from the software architect and the designers. So another view which would be more like the design view, let's say here, we say the design view, and you could have another view which would be maybe, uh, let's say, the view from the analysts and looking inside how oh, this black box for this nice system A uh, is done. So right, in this design view, what are we interested in? Well, we're interested in, in a lot of things. We're interested into which technology basis we are operating under. So technology and the choices we make. Like, are we doing some Java? Are we using some PHP? Are we using some, let's say, Tickle, Perl, you name it, C code, and whatever platform you want. So here, technology. Then another thing we are interested in is showing what is the structure of the design. So we are interested in the structure of subsystems at two levels. So we need the macro level and we need the micro level. Like all is the complete solution structure in terms of modules and in the micro how are things going on inside these modules? So for this we can use a number of tools and before I get to tools, look at what we document. So we document something and we try to document a software architecture and more often than not we are at the end producing a software architecture document, SAD in short, and this is based on two uh, SRS software requirement specifications which is made by, guess what, the nice use cases and the documentation of the use case specifications and the supplementary specification. This is making up the software requirements specification, SRS, right? Which is, could be also a document. So here, back to the software architecture document. We will say, okay, our system is going to use this technology. And now we have to talk about the structure. We need to talk about the macro structure and the micro structure for the solution we provide to the problem stated into the software requirements specification. So what do we do here? Well, it's interesting to say, that, okay, this is the software architecture document. It talks about this and that, right? And then provide an overview of the solution. Overview of solution. Well, basically, the solution is made of this big 
part and we have around it a number of other parts which are dealing with our system here and maybe then we need to go inside this and show what the various layers are or the various components and so on let's say well we have a presentation layer we may have a business logic layer we may have a data access layer and i hope you see it we have a store a, a storage layer and we may have a number of services on the side this would be the logical architecture right then so good so far we need to show how these things are talking together and there are a number of techniques to, to get somewhere. You could choose to pick up any part and start explaining it and so on, but there is a number of good techniques you can put to use for your software architecture documents. So the first thing you have to know is that when you do software architecture, you think about responsibilities. Responsibilities. And this, it is right here. And responsibilities work at the macro but also work at the micro levels. Let's say at the macro level, you would say, well, who is responsible for logging into this uh, system? Maybe you have a logging component here, a logging subsystem. Well, you could depict it the way you want here. I use a stupid package. If you like UML2, you could use a nice component, which is the logical component. And if you want to talk about physical things, you can use an artifact. Well, no problem. The issue is not there. The issue is that you put a boundary, a boundary about around a key concept. And here, let's say I have this logging concept, and I could have another one, which could be here, the not the logging, but the access control. Access control is interesting, and also you could have transaction management. Another one, transact management. Right, good. So, we have these parts, but of course you have other subsystems. Let's say here I have another subsystem, which would be, I don't know, let's say uh, measurement logic. And this measurement logic is interesting because when someone calls it through an interface, it has to uh, make use of the logging services. And there, okay, you have what is called an architectural concern. So a concern, right? And for this concern, you have to give it a name. And I like to use uh, the pattern, uh, let's say, uh, structure when talking about concerns. So you give it a name. So uh, logging. And because logging is not only the logging components, it's the logging mechanism, the logic, the way these things have to work. So, for this logging thing, you have to say, okay, what, is the, what, is the, what are the forces that are in play? For example, I have to have a centralized logging, right, okay, and I have to be able to enable and disable this logging, or other things like this. So, basically, you have a solution that comes up, and this solution, you explain what is good in there. You have also anti-solutions. And you can explain why you don't choose to do uh, some things. Because concerns are not really linked to one given component. You have multiple aspects. So like, how do we keep things modular? And this would be a macro level concern. Or you can have micro level concerns. How the hell do we uh, write fast enough through the network, given the fact that we have huge data sets? Do we put multiple cars and so on? It's a micro concern. Uh, so, we have here this notion of responsibilities and responsibilities are going to be allocated to components or subsystems like I wrote before. Then you have this other notion of let's say concerns and it's interesting to see that these are not the same, and you have a number of interactions between parts. Okay. And these interactions could use a number of, let's say, sequence diagrams, usually, and you have a number of them. So, sequence diagram for interaction. 
And the thing is, let's say this is interaction A and this is interaction B. Uh, what you are interested in is showing that it's interaction A and then in some cases you continue with B and maybe you push down with C and D and so on. And you want to show all these things. Well, there is a tool for that and this tool is called an interaction overview diagram. It's like here we start typically and then we continue and we may have here the occurrence of interaction A and the occurrence of interaction A. And based on the outcomes, let's say here, we go this way or we go this way. If condition one is satisfied or else we go the other way, here we would say we have an instance of interaction B. Otherwise we get an interaction C. And any, anyway, once this and this is done, we get into interaction D. Well, I'll try to try to draw it better. And there we go. Right? So the interaction overview helps you show all the interactions are working between components, but not repeating everything and not ending up with very, very long uh, sequence diagrams. So it's a very good tool. It's called the interaction overview diagram. It's like an activity diagram, but it's used for interactions. Well, uh, there is a lot more to say, but given the limit I have on YouTube videos, I will keep it at that and just uh, wait for the next uh, video. So thank you for watching. This is Philip Back from iOptain.